we had to stop taping in the middle of Dolce's groom because my daughter, um, my son and my husband went bike riding to the beach and she had a major bike crash and she flipped over. So we cut the cameras and had to tend to her wounds. She got injured pretty badly on her elbows and um, her knee and her hip. And the music that you hear in the videos, um, some of them, um, is performed by my kids. They're musicians. And we're a little worried because her elbow is pretty raw to the skin. And hopefully she'll be able to still play. So this is part two. Um, and sometimes you don't get a chance. You'll bathe them and you'll have them all ready. The optimal time to clip your dog would be right after you bathe them and force dry them. But in this case, because we couldn't finish recording, I'm going to have to... I left Dolce in a, a half groom. <laughs> and you can always go back um, and clean them up the next day. And that's kind of the advantage of having the ability to home groom, even if you do take them to a professional groomer. Um, you know, after they've been groomed at the groomer, maybe two weeks out, you might have a special event and you can, uh, it's nice to know that you can either do a touch-up groom or if you groom at home, you don't have the pressure of getting everything done all in one sitting. For me, I was recording and so I wanted to kind of get the recording done all in one setting sitting, but um, a family injury took precedence. So for, but we might as well take advantage of it. For, um, um, if you have a situation like mine where in the middle of grooming or you just ran out of energy to finish the groom or maybe you just didn't want to put your dog through the bath, the blow dry, and a groom, you can always, um, groom them the next day. The hair doesn't lay as nicely and um, they might not be clean anymore, but it's okay. So what I've done is I've spritzed her with the Pure Paws Ultra Shine, just a little bit of moisture, and I've rebrushed her out. And then I'm going to do her second clipping. I did her first clipping and then the kids came home. So I'm going to clean her up with the second clipping and get rid of some of the lines. I've sprayed her, I've brushed her, and you see me combing her with the grooming comb to get the hairs. I'm gonna go under the elbows here. And invariably, it's hard to get a perfectly even body with just the first pass. Normally you'll go over the body twice to get rid of the lines. Or you can go through and clip her the body once. And then uh, you can fine tune with scissors and just get rid of all the lines and the markings. Like here, you can, you can do this with the clipper. Or you can do it with scissors. And you want to be careful with the, the skin here. It can get caught. So I'm not going to go close to her armpits. I'll clean that up with scissors. It's safer. Um, you can see the clipper pretty much did a pretty good job of I won't need to I won't need to um, go over this with scissors because it's pretty clean by just floating out. And if you're lazy or in a hurry you can just be done. So you can see without any scissoring work on her leg, um, the legs came out real nice and tapered by just doing the float out method. So her will clean out her ribs, go underneath, and we borrowed some production lights from our friends David and Justin, and we're trying out doing a recording using these lights. They make um, professional videos for musicians and um, 
We'll see if folks at home can see better. That was pretty good, huh, Dolch? So you see we've tied our ha hair up a little bit goofy. I'm going to go right down the middle going reverse. And then down her ribs, I'm going to follow the growth of her hair. Going down. I'll follow the growth of her hair. Come here and finish shaping her legs. it's a lot easier to use the clipper than the scissors so you can see her legs are I won't need to scissor this part it's blended in nicely with just this technique we'll come in and follow the growth of the hair being careful to put your finger where her the skin here is under her armpits I'm going to protect that with my finger go in the same direction as the growth of her hair and here on this side, we're going to go around and down, protecting the skin under her armpits again. I'm going to use my finger as a barrier and go down and around. Okay, now here on the neck, I'm going to go reverse. Because I like to define out a tighter neck and gently float up to the end of the zephyr and scoop out. And I'm going to do that all the way around to create a little bit of plastic surgery which is creating a very long neck by going in tighter. It also gives a very smooth cut feel the cuts a lot more even when you go reverse against the skin so now here where the shoulder ends you can feel where the shoulder ends here I'm gonna go reverse scooping out as I get to the ear area to create a neck all the way around I'll use my hand as a barrier starting where the shoulder line stops and the neck starts, I'll scoop out and again this way and some of you at home might have dogs like Dolce who here's the shoulder you'll be able to feel where the shoulder stops so where the shoulder stops right here I'm going to start there and go up against the grain of the hair and scoop out. Scoop out. And it doesn't have to be perfect if you're at home, but you are going to see a nice long neck created for your dog. Um, and really, there's a lot of optical illusions that can be done with just a cut. Now she's going to look a little goofy here because I'm leaving this tuft of hair. I think I feel like I need to make her ears a little fluffier. So if you want thick plush ears you can bring down some of the neck hair. So I'm going to leave a little tuft here and if those of you at home that want to grow out hair, hair of your Maltese into your long ears for Korean cut um, we can grow out the hair together so there's about an inch now and we'll slowly grow it out and include it into her top knot so now as we said we're going to do a second pass now that the line is created we'll go around one more time to make sure that we've created a nice long neck and then this part will Pull the skin a little bit. If you don't want to do scissor work to blend the neck and the shoulders, you just need to pull the skin taut and go back in the right direction with the growth of the hair and that'll kind of alleviate the lines. We'll pull the skin, we'll pull the skin taut 
and just glide over real quick to get rid of the lines. And that way there's no scissor work needed. So pull the skin taut and just glide in the right direction of the hair. And you've essentially blended the neck where we went reverse. You've blended the neck area with the shoulder area by pulling the skin and going back and deleting those lines. So we don't really need to do any scissor work at all to blend the two different lengths. But she has definitely a defined neck. And don't she's so little. And then we'll clean up this area. Pull. Let me go up, it's a little uneven here. Okay, so you'll pull on the skin to get rid of the lines and just go with the growth of the hair. Okay. See if her body's even. Just one quick pass. Down, down, down. Down, down, down. And I think she's pretty even. So with Dolce here, what we've done, if you look at her sideways, as you can see the corner of her eye, we've pulled the hair up, going straight out from the corner of her eye. And this, there's no correct formula on how to cut a dog's face. You know, there's a million different ways to do a teddy bear cut. There's a million different interpretations of a Korean cut. But for purposes of learning at home, um, and it's kind of scary if you're going to cut, trim back your dog's face the first time, I just wanted to show you that you can kind of use this as a demarcation and start from there. And as you groom more and more, you groom at home, you'll realize you know your, you know your dog's face, and you'll know what looks good on them, you'll know what doesn't look good on them, and you'll be able to do this. Um, I don't necessarily do this demarcation when I trim the dogs, but I do tie their ears up because I feel that, you know, it just takes one slice, one incorrect cut, and you'll have the ears that took so long to grow gone. So the ears I will tie up, but here for today I have tied up this demarcation line which we'll use to trim up her face. Come forward. The camera and I'll cut. Come forward and cut. And I'll shape like that. So that's kind of a using a, the pull forward technique is a good way to safely do it if you're grooming at home for the first time because your hands are a barrier. Your hands are going to be between you and the dog, um, the scissors in the, the face of your dog. And when you pull forward and cut, we'll use Dolce as an example, when you brush the hair back, it falls kind of in a layered style. And so it, you can see that it kind of layers itself by doing that pull forward technique. So Let's say we do the pull forward technique. And then here we're going to get rid of, here we're going to clean this up. So I don't normally have scissors by their face that often. So you can see the Dolce is going to object a little bit. So when I'm holding scissors, I'm going to hold her a little firmer than I normally would. I'm not going to hurt her, but I'm going to let her know that she really should stay still I'm using scissors. But this is good for you to see at home that she is going to object. So here we go. I 
You know, a lot of you have dogs that lay down and you have dogs that dance. I do have a dog that dances when I'm trying to trim her face back. And we'll show you that as well. All right, so you see how we've kind of shaped the side of her face and it's all it layers itself by using these chunkers. Um, it, when you brush it back, it will layer itself. And now I'm going to come underneath. I'm going to use my hands as a barrier. And again, this is just one technique. It's not necessarily the technique. And I'm going to go straight across and cut some of her beard. Because Dolce is a tiny, tiny dog. And she, we've let her, we've let her beard go kind of long. But she looks better when her, her beard is trimmed up and she can be quite naughty when we're trying to trim her up but that's okay for you to see that dogs are not always going to cooperate and that's a number one comment I've gotten is we love to groom at home but our dog doesn't cooperate straight. Oh, and she be a good model. Who's so pretty? It's not really a teddy bear and it's not really a puppy, it's more of a, a dolce polar bear. She looks like a polar bear to us. And so her face is too tiny and her body's too tiny to carry um, a, a long beard. She looks too heavy and as you can see from the last few photo shoots, her beard has been too long. So after you do that, you want to comb everything down and then you want to comb everything back and then make sure you have kind of a nice curved shelf. And these, these blenders are awesome. You can pretty much do the whole face. I typically do it once with the curved shear and once with the chunkers and once with the thinners, but these are aggressive enough that I don't feel like I need them. Oh, look how cute you look. And then pretending to hold a treat up to get her to look up. So the interesting thing about cutting the neck is there's always little hairs that seem to hide hide out. And that when you think you're done, these new hairs will come popping out. And that's why, ooh, she's going to hold her neck up. Whoa, that's really cool. It's good to comb it and do it again and again. 
And I guess one of the tricks you could do is hold a treat up. She seems fascinated with them. Um, the safety noose, and that just allowed me to really clean up the bottom of her neck. <gasps> What's this, Tweety? Don't you? Have a Dolce flip. Let's see what she looks like. I'm just going to comb them down and tighten them in because they do grow out, <coughs> excuse me, they do grow out a little bit. So after you let her ears down, you can just kind of tidy the just tidy the frayed edges here. Let's see, take a look. And look at her face and see how it looks. And just tidy any. See if it's all balanced. Hi. Hi. See some. These little missed hairs will pop out. And the beauty is. You can um. You can give them a little groom and then if you find little hairs that are were somehow hidden, you can always go back and trim them. Even if you go to a pro groomer, it's nice to be able to tidy up your dogs. She looks good. Look at her sideways. I'll make sure she's tidy here. Tidy this area here. So you can use these blenders. Oh, I love these blenders actually. To tidy up any spots you might have missed with the clippers. Being careful not to go too close to the skin. So here's our armpits. I'm going to hold her up. Just kind of clean up these. Frayed edges. Being careful not to go too close to the skin. If you um are looking for a pretty decent me priced blenders. These Merlin blenders by Chris Christensen, they're quite, they're quite nice. They're kind of the good tweener. Pretty aggressive. But there is a technique that you can use to not be as aggressive using these, which I'll do in another video.
I'm just gonna comb them down and tie them in. Because they do grow out. <coughs> Excuse me. They do grow out a little bit. So after you let her ears down, you can just kind of tidy the. Just tidy the frayed edges here. Let's see, take a look. And look at her face and see how it looks. And just tidy any. See if it's all balanced. Hi. Hi. See some. These little missed hairs will pop out. And the beauty is. You can um. You can give them a little groom and then if you find little hairs that are were somehow hidden, you can always go back and trim them. Even if you go to a pro groomer, it's nice to be able to tidy up your dogs. She looks good. Get her sideways. I'll make sure she's tidy here. Tidy this area here. So you can use these blenders. Oh, I love these blenders actually. To tidy up any spots you might have missed with the clippers. Being careful not to go too close to the skin. I'll make sure she's tidy here. Tidy this area here. So you can use these blenders. Oh, I love these blenders actually. To tidy up any spots you might have missed with the clippers. Being careful not to go too close to the skin. So here's our armpits. I'm going to hold her up. Just kind of clean up these. Frayed edges. Being careful not to go too close to the skin. 
you um, are looking for pretty decent May priced blenders, these Merlin blenders by Chris Christensen are quite they're quite nice. They're kind of a good tweener. Pretty aggressive. But there is a technique that you can use to not be as aggressive using these. Which I'll do in another video. A situation like mine where in the middle of grooming or you just ran out of energy to finish the groom or maybe you just didn't want to put your dog through the bath, the blow dry and a groom, you can always um, groom them the next day. The hair doesn't lay as nicely and um, they might not be clean anymore but it's okay. So what I've done is I've spritzed her with the Pure Paws Ultra Shine, just a little bit of moisture, and I've rebrushed her out. And then I'm going to do her second clipping. I did her first clipping, and then the kids came home. So I'm going to clean her up with the second clipping and get rid of some of the lines. I've sprayed her, I've brushed her, and you see me combing her with the grooming comb to get the hairs. I'm going to go under the elbows here. And Invariably, it's hard to get a perfectly even body with just the first pass. Normally, you'll go over the body twice to get rid of the lines, or you can go through and clipper the body once. And then uh, you can fine tune with scissors and just get rid of all the lines. And the markings like here you can you can do this with the clipper or you can do it with scissors and you want to be careful with the the skin here it can get caught so I'm not going to go close to her armpits I'll clean that up with scissors it's safer um, you can see the clipper pretty much did a pretty good job of I won't need to I won't need to um, go over this with scissors because it's pretty clean by just floating out. And if you're lazy or in a hurry, you can just be done. So you can see without any scissoring work on her leg, um, the legs came out real nice and tapered by just doing the float out method. So I will clean out her ribs. Go underneath and we borrowed some production lights from our friends David and Justin and we're trying out doing a recording using these lights. They make um, professional videos for musicians and um, we'll see if folks at home can see better. 
That's pretty good, huh, Dolch? So you see we've tied her house actually to tidy up any spots you might have missed with the clippers. Being careful not to go too close to the skin. So here's our armpits. I'm gonna hold her up. Just kind of clean up these. edges. Be careful not to go too close to the skin. If you um, are looking for a pretty decent May priced blenders, these Merlin blenders by Chris Christensen, they're quite, they're quite nice. They're kind of a good tweener. Pretty aggressive, but there is a technique that you can use to not be as aggressive using these, which I'll do in another video. Being careful not to go too close to the skin. If you um, are looking for a pretty decent May priced blenders, these Merlin blenders by Chris Christensen, they're quite, they're quite nice. They're kind of a good tweener. Pretty aggressive. But there is a technique that you can use to not be as aggressive using these, which I'll do in another video. Thank you. 
you groom more and more, you groom at home, you'll realize you know your you know your dog's face and you'll know what looks good on them, you'll know what doesn't look good on them, and you'll be able to do this. Um, I don't necessarily do this demarcation when I trim the dogs, but I do tie their ears up because I feel that, you know, it just takes one slice, one incorrect cut, and you'll have the ears that took so long to grow gone. So the ears I will tie up, but here for today I have tied up this demarcation line which we'll use to trim up her face. Come forward. And I'll cut. Come forward and cut. And I'll shape like that. So that's kind of a using a, the pull forward technique is a good way to safely do it if you're grooming at home for the first time because your hands are a barrier. Your hands are going to be between you and the dog, um, the scissors in the, the face of your dog. And when you pull forward and cut, we'll use Dolce as an example, when you brush the hair back it falls kind of in a layered style. And so it, you can see that it kind of layers itself by doing that pull forward technique. So let's say we do the pull forward technique. And then here we're going to get rid of, here we're going to clean this up. So I don't normally have scissors by their face that often. So you can see that Dolce's going to object a little bit. So when I'm holding scissors, I'm going to hold her a little firmer than I normally would. I'm not going to hurt her, but I'm going to let her know that she really should stay still I'm using scissors. But this is good for you to see at home that she is going to object. So here we go. I know a lot of you have dogs that lay down and you have dogs that dance. I do have a dog that dances when I'm trying to trim her face back. And we'll show you that as well.